Hello again and welcome to another edition in the second series of Priority Message. With me today, I have Mark Palmer, the President of the Fire and Rescue Services Association. Hi, Mark. Hello, Tristan. How are you today? All good. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Um, so it was important that we uh, recorded uh, a podcast quite quickly after the national pay offer was announced just to up, update members on the details of the pay offer and what our initial thoughts were. Yeah, so um, what, so what is a pay offer? Just to clarity for the members. So if I could take a step back, because this pay offer was a little bit out of the blue, because what has happened in previous years is that um, there will have been an offer made by the employers after some discussions within the National Joint Council. That pay offer is then uh, initially rejected or not agreed by the FBU. There's a number of months that carry on after that, um, at the end of which the FBU agree. Normally, historically, that's been about October time for a backdated payment um, on the 1st of July of the same year. But what's happened this time, and I think I know why it's happened this way, is that um, we're in we're in late April, early May, and we've had a pay offer of a flat rate of 4% uh, covering all Greybook staff on all roles. Uh, that includes uh, both the basic salary and CPD. In addition to that, there's some work on uh, maternity pay and probably most important for the majority of the listenership will be a banding structure for the retaining fee. Okay, so what, what does that really mean? Let, let's break it down into, into the three areas and the 4% uh, obviously, we welcome the four percent, don't we? The four percent, I think, what normally happens is you get a you get an offer, and historically it's been two percent uh, due to budget constraints that isn't particularly attractive, but it will be across the board of the public sector, so it ends up being accepted. This time we've had an offer of four percent, which, on the face of it, you're quite right, is quite attractive. Um, and I think that's probably why the FBU very unusually have come out within a matter of days where their national executive have met, um, revised the pay offer and recommended uh, acceptance because 4% at, at face value is quite good. The problem we've got and the problem we've had for decades is that that is an unfunded pay rise. And what that means is, um, the budgets will have been agreed or, or about to be agreed already in fire and rescue services. It's very the, the, the budgeting um, mechanism is very short term, unfortunately. Um, and that pay increase will come from one of two ways. It will come from an increase in council tax. Or it will come from an increase in saving. You could argue that the um, uh, reserves can also be be used, but obviously once you've spent reserves, you can only spend them once and then you've got a bigger problem the following year. So our concern is this is an unfunded pay offer, which means that it's going to come from an increase in tax. But more importantly, it could and might come from budget savings. And those savings will come from a reduction in the number of firefighters and or station closures. And we've already seen that over the last 12 months with the last two um, pay increases, haven't we? You know, um, we'll so already... again, you know, it's really important that you say that. So we, we had a double whammy pay offer of seven and five percent 2022 and 2023. Again, unfunded. We raised the exact same concerns then as we're raising now in that um, an increase in council tax won't necessarily cover that 12%. Potentially the, the council tax increase could cover the 4% incre increase. Um, but last time we've seen uh, CRMPs, so the, the annual uh, or, or um, 
four yearly process of revising the structure of a fire and rescue service. So we've seen Cheshire uh, reduce the number of on-call appliances and firefighters. We've seen proposals in Hereford and Worcester to remove the number of on-call appliances. We've seen proposals in Cambridgeshire to close on-call stations. And we've witnessed in Warwickshire um, very, very recently, and, and it's still bubbling along where they're looking to remove their entire on-call establishment. So this is about being responsible. This is about being professional from where we're concerned. It's very easy just to say, OK, 4%, let's take that. That sounds good. Our members are going to get a 4% pay rise. And there will be people out there who are not interested in the implications. They'll only be interested, and understandably so, um, we're listing a, a living in a cost of living crisis, where they'll just be interested in that 4%. But as a, a an independent, responsible trade union, we've got to look at the bigger picture. And we've got to understand that potentially, if you just take that 4% at face value that's unfunded, we, we could have members who lose their jobs. Now, we've already got, and it, you know, the FBU have said this on numerous occasions, locally and nationally and publicly, that they are decrying the fact that there are approximately 10,000 fewer uh, operational firefighter posts than what there were 10, 15 years ago. And that's true. But if we carry on, with this yearly cycle of having unfunded pay rises, um, unfortunately, we're going to see even more firefighter posts um, be, be lost because uh, savings are having to be used to compensate and provide the funds for the pay increase. OK, so so that's that's the four percent. So what what's it for the encore then? OK, so if we go back um, I think it was to last year, last February. Um, this is when there was discussions about an improved pay offer that resulted in a 7 and 5% annual increase in 2022 and 2023. They also highlighted that they were going to have, the NJC was going to have some work streams that were going to cover uh, the retained duty system firefighters, control members, pay progression, new roles, and continuous professional development CPD. So there was a work stream for retained uh, duty system firefighters um, over an eighth, eight month period uh, of which there were seven meetings. We know all this because we've we've been uh, we've seen the um, results of that working group. And the results of that working group have looked at the recruitment and retention problems and decided that one of the solutions to this will be to uh, widen the pay bands for the retaining fee. So currently within the grey book, you've got a 100% retainer. So if you're providing on average 120 hours or more, you get 100% retainer. That retainer is 10% of a whole timers um, equivalent, whole timers role salary. And if you provide less than 120 hours on average per week, you will get 75% of that retaining fee. Now, obviously, that is quite unfair because there's there's 48 hours between those that give uh, availability of 120 hours and 168 hours. So there's no fairness there because that particular band is so wide. But it's even more unfair on the lower band where you can provide between at one and 119 hours technically, and still be paid the same retaining fee. So we understand why the NJC has come up with this proposal and the national employers have, have, has put this as part of the pay offer. They are widening the bands so that instead of a 10% retainer for 120 hours or more, you get 15%. So that is a 50% uplift. Um, for between 91 and 119 hours, you get 12 and a half percent. So again, that's an uplift. Um, for 61 to 90 hours, you get 10 percent. For 31 to 60 hours, you get 7.5 percent. And for 1 to 30 hours, you get 5 percent of the retaining fee. So um, we've gone from two bands to five. 
Now, locally, as you know, um, through local agreements of which we've been party to some of those, um, these banding systems are already in place locally. And anecdotally, I think I think around about 32 brigades have got these banding systems already. Anecdotally, what it's tended to do, it's moved people to the lowest band where they feel most comfortable, um, disincentivizing, giving more availability. And that's why, well, one of the reasons why we've got concerns with regards to this proposal. Yeah, so so we've we've had concerns on the the mechanism for the pay for on call for a number of years and we've been raising it and it seems like the gap's getting wider currently um i know with the introduction of these extra pay bands there is definitely an improvement and obviously a 50 percent increase for the higher pay band looks good to start off with but what's your thoughts on that Devil's in the detail <clears throat> and yeah, statistics, you can make them say whatever you want. So we've tried to be as thorough as we possibly could. Uh, and we've put out um, both on our website, through our app, uh, and I'll give a plug for our FRSA app um, uh, for anybody out there who's listening, who's not downloaded it completely free. You just need to register and you'll get access to a lot more information that you would uh, simply by visiting our website. So we've undertaken some analysis and we've we've put it out there as um, transparent as we possibly could. We've calculated using um, a, the whole time competent firefighter rate, which is currently £36,226. And we've worked out that if you break it down into an hourly rate on each of the five new bands, you are paid less the more hours you provide, which to us seems completely and utterly perverse and the opposite of what, what we should be doing. Now, whether this was a deliberate uh, intention or not, I, I honestly don't know. We can, we can talk about the fact that we fed in to the national employees our concerns um, beforehand because we did get sight um, of this proposal a um, couple of weeks earlier, didn't we, as, as part yeah. of our consultation arrangements with the national employers. But if you look, and what we've done on the calculation, we've, we've, we've looked at the highest number of hours you can provide in each band. And we've worked out that at the top band, you get paid 62p an hour. At the second band, so 91 to 119 hours, you get paid 73 Next band 77, next band 87, and the lowest band between naught and thir uh, between naught and 30 hours, you get paid one pound 16. Now, you know as well as I do that that I mean we, we could argue that it should be a flat rate across the board, but that is not the way to go. Where you are paying more pe more per hour to the people who are providing the lowest number of hours of availability. Yeah, and, and it, it just shows um, by working out by the hourly rate, the, the difference in it. And like you said, for somebody giving up to 168 hours, getting equivalent of 62 pence an hour, and then someone just giving fir up to 30 hours is £1.16 an hour. That's a massive difference, isn't it? It's a massive difference. Now, you know, let, let's be honest, you know, that retaining fee going up 50% if you're providing 120 to 168 hours a week is good. It's a good thing, you know, um, and, and the same with the, the, the next band. So we, we don't want to throw everything out. We don't want to discredit the, the entire proposal with regards to um, the retained duty system offer we would we just couldn't accept this now this this pay offer has gone out for consultation to the wide sector which has included us so we will be feeding back um once we've received as much uh, feedback from our members as possible but on the face of this I, I i cannot see how this is going to incentivize and overcome the recruitment and the retention crisis that the retained duty system is currently suffering yeah so um with regards to 
what we would be doing next then we want our members to feed back to us don't we we want our feed members to feed back to us and um, we've already put that out on the website so again visit frsa.org.uk if you're listening to this podcast um, details are on there on how to feed back again highly recommend the app um, the app now provides um, secure private forums where members can discuss their, their views on this uh, we've also got various pieces of resources on the app now uh, where you're able to access the information that we've presented to the national employers not so much as a counter offer but as a, our initial thoughts on both the proposal um, but also how to overcome the recruitment and retention crisis that we've currently got uh, for on-call firefighters so again you know please feed in your information if you don't want to visit the website if you don't want to download an app um, you can email hq at frsa.org.uk to feed in your information all views are welcome we'll be uh, analyzing every response that we get and they will help to formulate our final uh, response to the national employers yeah and we've got to make it fair that everybody's getting paid the same for the same commitment that they do um, and whether it is 30 hours or whether it's 168 hours it's got to be reflective of that well I, I, you're you're absolutely right and it seems so obvious to me i'm not putting this as our formal response but it seems so obvious to me that if you was to have a flat rate of let's say one pound 20 per hour and if one week you do 68 hours then that's how much you get paid if the next week you do you know 140 then that's how much you get paid on an hourly basis it might it might i mean technology is a wonderful thing but it might be more difficult to administer but then again with repel with firewatch with gartan with fire service rotor um it shouldn't be that difficult these days booking on and off that to be able to be calculated on a weekly or monthly basis um it's a fair system it incentivizes providing more hours of availability i'm just wondering mark am i missing something on that no i, I don't think you are it's it's important that you will have a, a number of contracted hours you you need to do as part of your contract because um, you can't just pick and choose because so services can't plan anything however you know if the pumps off the run and you can give extra availability and if it's one or two hours extra, you should be paid differently. You should be paid for that and not doing it for nothing at the end of the day. And and lots of people are doing it for nothing. Lots of people, I mean, you know this better than anybody because you're still serving, you're at the heart of everything, you're boots on the ground. You know that currently, uh, where there are, are any two bands, most will say, well, I'll, I'll just fit in the, um, the 0 to 119 hours or, or below 120 hours bracket, three quarter retaining fee. Uh, because I don't want that pressure of having to give 120 hours or more every week, even though on average they probably do. You know, there will be hundreds, if not thousands of people out there who are providing availability for free. And, and that's going back to then why we believe the pay formula as such is the problem rather than not. And going back over the last 20 years of how the pay has increased very small compared to a whole time fighter's wages. Um, if you was to move don't. away from being connected with the whole time salary and have its own hourly rate of availability that was formulated that would allow it to be attractive to people who are not currently serving or attractive to people who are currently serving who are looking to leave the service because of the requirements so high and the financial reward um, is much lower, then I think that would go some way to overcoming the recruitment and retention crisis that we currently have. Yeah, yeah. And I, I can give a little bit of an example, an actual fact, of how the, the formula doesn't make sense to me. Now, over the last 20 years, a whole time firefighter's wages has gone up £5 and £12 an hour. And an on call retainer, and I've based it on 120, so I've based it on lower band, is um, has gone up 18 pence an hour. Um, now, to me, that doesn't make sense. If 
if it's meant to be 10 percent if there's a percentage there you would expect it to go up to 51 pence an hour because that would be 10 percent of it and it's not it's a lot less so that's where the pay formula is not correct i think the, the, another um unique area with regards to on-call firefighters is that you know what you are paid there will be you know one or two or three percent of people out there who don't have a primary job but by and large your fire service pay will be taxed whether it be 20 percent or whether it be 40 percent you will have already used uh, your tax allowance within your primary occupation um, so that needs to be factored in as well um, the, the, the amount of money that you take home is a lot lower um, in terms of comparing it with a whole time salary that incorporates the tax allowance you know there, there's been arguments for a number of years if not decades and we've certainly pushed forward on this is that um, the retaining fee should be tax free now again um, hmrc might you know throw their hands in the air and say that's a really complicated thing to administer is it though really or is it just something that they don't particularly want to do because it's a little bit difficult and it's a little bit different? Um, I, I still think that we should be looking at that. You know, pay is not the only problem. We know that. We know invariably it's actually the management of on-call units that's the primary reason why so many people leave. But just before we, we, we move on, I just also wanted to highlight CPD, if I can, Mark, um, because the 4% increase relates to CPD as well. Let's not forget on call firefighters only get 25% of the full CPD rate, which we have said is completely and utterly unfair and wrong. Now, historically, um, when CPD was introduced, the argument was on average, on call firefighters worked 10 positive hours a week whole time firefighters work 42 positive hours a week. Therefore, the difference was around about 25%, which is why the CPD payment is what it is. Our view is that a firefighter is a firefighter. You have to have the same competencies. You go on the same jobs. You go on the same BA courses, etc. To then say you are only a, you're worth only a quarter of that in terms of your continuous professional development is a complete insult and needs to be addressed. And and also, the whole time firefighter doesn't do forty two hours a week training, do they? Um, and that, that that's it. It's about developing themselves, about maintaining their development. So, again, that's not right. And again, before I forget, because I've got I'm getting old, I do have a habit of forgetting things. I just wanted to touch on why this pay offer, the first pay offer, because normally, you know. You, out, even outside the fire service the employer comes in with a pay offer it's below what they normally are, are happy to, to to pay there's going to be some negotiation and then you know there's a higher offer agreed this pay offer the first pay offer of four percent is quite good putting aside the fact it's unfunded and we're not going to go through all this rigmarole that we've had in previous years where even though the, the pay date of the 1st of July has passed, no agreement has been made to around about October, then it's backdated. I think all of that is going to be agreed quite quickly. And the key reason why that's going to be agreed quite quickly is because the NJC wants to be able to say, hey, how good are we? The NJC is working fine. We've managed to agree a national uh, pay offer very quickly, amicably, no threat of strike action, etc. Therefore, the NJC doesn't need reforming, leave it alone. I think that's why we have got the pay offer that we have at the time that we have, because yeah. the NJC is ultimately looking after itself. Yeah, 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 I totally agree there. Yeah. Um, so what about the uh, maternity pay element then? Brief overview on that. <coughs> so the maternity pay, um, where you know, credit to the FBU, the FBU have gone on a campaign of getting uh, 52 weeks maternity pay. Um, you know, we've we've had discussions with the National Employers, as you know about this. 
their argument is that one of their concerns is if they agree to grey book staff, they're going to have to agree to 52 weeks, or they would certainly come under pressure to agree 52 weeks across the whole of the public sector, like a domino effect. So <clears throat> my guess is reading between the lines, they've come back and said, we'll agree 26 weeks full pay and then uh, statutory pay after that. Uh, again, the FBU have already made their, um, exec, national exec have already made their uh, feelings known in that they're accepting the offer. It's positive. Um, you know, we want to attract more females into the service. This is a step forward with regards to that. It's not the full 52 weeks that the FBU campaign is seeking, but locally, those agreements can be made to extend on the 26, presuming it's agreed. Um, and, and, you know, we've already seen that 52 weeks has been agreed locally in some other services. Yeah. OK, um, so before we finish off the, on the pay side of it, then it's really important that our members um, contact us, let us know, keep us, let, let us know their thoughts um, so that we can then make a response based on our members um, views. Um, so where's the best place to do that? Well, you know, some people like apps, some people don't. If you if you if you like apps, you're not going to get loads of spam or anything like that. Uh, I would highly recommend downloading the app. You can have a detailed conversation in there. Um, as I said, it's secure, it's private. Um, so I would highly recommend downloading the app, the FRSA app um, from Google and the Apple Store. Again, you can go onto our website, um, use the contact us area, or you can simply email hq at frsa.org.uk. You can also go through your local branch um, we would highly recommend um, local branches get together to discuss the offer and that will be fed back to headquarters as well. Yeah, and it's important to understand what it really means to you as well. It's important that you understand what it means to you. Um, and I can understand that any individual will look at it purely from their perspective. And that, that's absolutely right. We have to look at the future of the fire and rescue service as well um, to ensure it's sustainable. Um, this is again yet another annual pay offer where we're not talking about broadening of the role. You know, we're not talking about proper reform of the pay structures. I think it's just yet another missed opportunity. I don't know how many more missed opportunities we're going to have. Um, but yeah, it, the, the members' feedback, we are a member-led organisation and what our members, um, if they if, if they come back overwhelmingly against or for, then that's the that's the approach we will take. Okay. So uh, just before we finish, Trishan, what else are we doing um, in the UK at the moment? Um, it's very busy. Um, obviously, we've 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 seen the independent culture report in South Wales. Um, so I was invited down there to meet the chief last week, or the interim chief, I should say, Stuart Millington. Um, spent a good hour and a half with him. A very impressive chap, looking to, to make the right changes. Anybody who's read the independent report, I think it's about 180 odd pages. It's, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. So Stuart um, has got a big job on his hands, but we've given our commitment to him and his team to do all we can to support him in overcoming um, the, the toxic culture that currently exists in some parts of the service. Uh, and I, you know, to stress, it's only some parts. Um, we're looking to increase our membership base down in South Wales. Uh, more than happy to undertake any station visits um, and some communications with people out there and the chief and his team is going to help us do that as well. Uh, in addition, I've um, got a meeting uh, with the principal officers in North Wales later this month and meeting the chief of Scotland on Friday with the local branch up there as well. So there's, as ever, a lot going on. So a busy week ahead for you then, Tristan. It certainly is. And Scotland are looking to do a service review. Um, 
always get nervous when services look to do a service review because <clears throat> the result normally means cuts uh, and you know we will fight those cuts that we deem to be inappropriate and we will put together an alternative proposal if that is indeed the case yeah okay, and I yeah just wanted... just wanted to point out that up in scotland we have a lot of members of volunteers so we support them as well <sighs> volunteers um they are unbelievable they really are because they <clears throat> they their their pay is almost non-existent for what they do um obviously wildfires particularly in the highlands of scotland uh, are, are going to become a more prevalent um the job the job they do is fantastic uh, and it's our job to ensure that they're equipped with the appropriate resources uh, and that they're kept safe um you know there are volunteers in other parts of the uk but the volunteers in scotland are just unbelievably amazing people yeah yeah okay well thank you for your time today tristan um and let's hope our members uh, feed back to us and give us the information they please do please do um i would also say you know that there's lots of chatter out there lots of um uh, expressions of information being given absorb all of that information as much as you can uh, and use that to, to formulate your opinion and feed it back to us as soon as possible yeah. okay. great to see you mark speak to you again speak Cheers. to you again soon thanks a lot take care Bye.